And then what, what was interesting is, what time did Anthony Joshua fight? It was in New York, so was it Saturday night? It was Saturday night, right? Yeah. I was on stage, and I get a text from Brian, the kid Callan, that goes, stop what you're doing, <laughs> go on Twitter and look at the, uh, this is how I found out, look at the Anthony Joshua results. I'm like, oh, I bet Joshua knocked him out in like, I don't know, six, seven seconds. It must be really bad. And I go on there, and to my surprise, Anthony Joshua, not only did he lose, he got beat the fuck up. It wasn't, this isn't a, so when I first found out, I'm reading like all the, you know, the Twitter account stuff like that. This wasn't a fluke. This wasn't. He he. They, it was the early in the first round. He's he's just outclassing Andy Ruiz Jr. and Ruiz throws like a check hook with his eyes closed and catches him behind the air and he drops and knocks out this the world champion. Oh no no no! When I watched it myself, I went, oh well, well Andy Ruiz just like we we assumed he can box his ass off, and his game plan is what made this thing what it is. And he got it was a fight. And not only was a fight, but you saw the skills of Joshua, you saw the skills of Andy Ruiz Jr. And you realize Andy Ruiz Jr. should definitely be there, and he was not outclassed. Andy Ruiz Jr. is a monster. And when you look at his background, and you'll see guys, and even I tried, when uh, I saw uh, Stephen A. Smith was like, oh, this butter bean, and he got beat by no talent. Like, obviously, he's just doing it for the troll stuff like that. But when you look at Andy Ruiz, and if you, Go back to last week's show when I went, here's the problem with this. So at, at their level, you know, Anthony Ruiz Jr., I think he's 100, 105. He had 105 amateur fights. He won 100 of them, lost only five. So the guy's gonna be pretty fucking good. He's seen every style, definitely styles like Anthony Joshua. It's nothing he hasn't seen before. Then you look at his pro record. Okay, the guy has 30, 34 pro fights. Going into this fight, he had 33. One of those was against freaking uh, Joseph Parker, who some people thought he beat. If you go back and watch that fight, some people thought that was a fight that could have went Ruiz's way. So the kids, 32 and one go into this fight. Obviously, he can fucking fight, fight. And so at this level, and this is why I get so mad, whenever I hear a I'm just gonna be dead honest with you guys. When I hear a Tyson Fury fight, if it doesn't have Joshua or Wilder into it, I don't wanna see it. If it's a Wilder fight, if it doesn't have Anthony Joshua or Fury in it, I don't wanna see it. If it's Anthony Joshua, doesn't have Wilder or Fury in it, I don't wanna see it. Why is this? Because of this. This is exactly why. I told you guys before, I went, oh, hopefully he doesn't fuck around and end up losing. Because at this level, these guys are fucking good, man. These guys are, especially at heavyweight, these guys are really, really, really good. So finally, it's caught up with them. The game, it, the game it's just like father time. The, the, the fight, the fight gods, they always, they're, they're, they always win, man. It's like a casino. They always, always win. The house always wins. Name your favorite fighter. The house will always win unless you decide to take control of it. And even if you do, the house is always gonna win, but at least you can control the narrative a little bit. But these greedy promoters wanted to wait, not nah, to be there. What's the number one problem with boxing? This, and now you fuck this. Hopefully Eddie Hearn is somewhere going, damn, damn. Or maybe his ego's not. Maybe he's like, oh, we'll figure it out. He'll be okay. No, you fuck this, man. You robbed everybody, the entire world of this epic heavyweight showdown. Now we're still gonna get it, and Anthony Joshua is still an amazing fighter. And if you look over history, there's been great heavyweight fighters who have lost before. You don't need to be undefeated to be considered a great. The problem is Floyd Mayweather kind of fucked it up for everyone. And it's not his doing, it's societies where you think you gotta be undefeated to be a great fighter. No, 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 take a page out of MMA's book. You don't have to be undefeated to be a great. You're fine. And go back in history, there's been great fights. Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, some of the greats, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, some of the greats have lost and they go on to do these huge fights. Anthony Joshua's not done by any means. What the problem is now is this conversation of Anthony Joshua, Fury, and Wilder will now just throws gasoline on Anthony Joshua, um, metaphorically, people outside the UK. Remember everyone going, Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua. Well, now that it's tough to argue with that, right? Because he lost to Ruiz. You fucked around, man. You played with the house money. You guys got fucked. 
you didn't get out in time. You had it lined up, man, for, to make epic history. And they still will. It's just going to take a little long to get there, but you fucked us. You completely fucked us. It's such a shame, man. This was going to happen. Now, I, and I, this was going to happen to either Wilder, Joshua, or Fury. One of them was going to get screwed. There's no way the three of them were going to stay undefeated by the time they fight because of stupid-ass promoters. Someone was going to get caught, and this was the perfect freaking storm. Eddie Hearn just greedy, greedy. And this is what pisses me off so much about this. And I, this isn't me being a homer. This is me knowing fucking facts. Wilder did everything in his power to make that fight happen. He flew over to England on his own fucking dime to make that fight happen. He went over there and went, what do we got to do, man? Let's do this. What do we have to do? And did they make him an offer? And does Eddie Hearn say that out loud? They did make him an offer, but it was such a low offer that they're not serious. That wasn't real. They knew Joshua wasn't ready for Wilder. Exhibit A here, this is why this was happening. This is exactly why this was happening. And Wilder did everything. So when I, whenever I have a chip on my shoulder about Eddie Hearn, it's this, man, you fucked us. You just screwed him over. You screwed him over. And, and, and at some point, if you're a fighter, and this is what makes fighters great, is they're not scared of anybody. Ruiz has been in so many fights, again, 105 amateur fights, over 30 fights in the pros. You can toss these guys in when no fighter scared of anybody. So stop with that. Wilder scared of Joshua, no. Fury scared of Joshua, no. Wilder scared of Fury, no. Those guys don't give a fuck. It's their handlers, it's their management, which control the narratives in boxing, which are ruining boxing. Because again, the house is always gonna win. And these promoters are so greedy, they're so greedy, the house, the boxing gods, they won, man. But to that point, Andy Ruiz Jr. won. He never has to work another day in his life, which is fantastic. It was at the expense of Joshua, but you know what? That's fine, that's the game. That's what kind of makes boxing great. But also knowing that this is the game and learning from previous dumbass ideas from promoters, you would think they would learn, but they don't. So they wait and they wait until finally we get the fights that we've wanted to see that should have happened years prior. When we finally get it, it's not worth what it should be. And now this one's definitely not. Joshua's gonna be fine though. He will be fine, but you did kind of fuck us. But Andy Ruiz Jr. never has to work a day in his life again. How great is that? You know what else is interesting is they offered him this fight. This is this kind of shit you're dealing with Hearn. They offered him this fight a year ago, offered him $40,000 to fight Anthony Joshua. And he turned it down. $40,000. And he goes, he goes, nah, wait, man. Gets his chance. And th but here's my thing. If you're Eddie Hearn and you're Joshua's handler and these, and he was, you're supposed to fight Big Baby Miller and he takes every steroid under the book and fails, you're like, all right, we need someone else. Are we not looking through the X's and O's of Andy Ruiz Jr. going, well, he is... He's 30, 32 and one, man. So he's pretty fucking good. Yeah, he's pretty good. And he is in shape, just fought a couple weeks ago. Well, who's his toughest opponent? Uh, he fought Joseph Parker. Oh, well, Joshua beat him, man. He did, but it was a fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, how'd that fight with Joseph Parker go? Well, he fought him in New Zealand to a decision. And, any, and a lot of outsiders think Ruiz actually won that too. So do you think that someone should have told Joshua, he's basically an undefeated dude, man. With quick hands, you're gonna get a lot of shit because the guy does not look like a world champion, but he has the skills of a world champion. There's no upside here, dude. There's no, let's, let's wait and get you a bigger fight. We don't have to fight in New York on that day. People are gonna be pissed, let's come back, or let's go back to Luis Ortiz, because at least Luis, they're all dangerous. If you can fight Luis, people are, are familiar with him from the Wilder days, but he's a monster, has the credibility, and he looks like the monster. I just, I, this shit is so common sense to me as a manager. It's on fucking believable. What was the upside here? Now again, like I said from day one, great. This is great for Andy Ruiz Jr. Now he's in the conversation because now they're gonna do the rematch. They're gonna try and stack all the chips in Anthony Joshua's corner, put it in England. And I will tell you this: that is not gonna be an easy fight for Joshua. Do not think he's gonna go in there and smoke Andy Ruiz Jr. That ain't gonna happen. Andy Ruiz Jr. has the style and the talent and the technique to make it a fucking fight, just like he did before. Just like he did before. 
great Cinderella story. And now, first Mexican heavyweight champion in history. How phenomenal is that, man? Just a great story, man. Just a freaking great story. And how many people were just shitting on everything that Rui, like, I, I saw one post, it said when, and obviously because they're both Mexican, the similarity ends there. Um, but it shows when Canelo was fighting Floyd Mayweather and Floyd Mayweather had all the belts, want Canelo to hold him. He's like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not holding your belts. I'm gonna earn them and took a picture. Then they show Andy Ruiz, Joshua giving to him. He's holding all of them like a like a, the kid from Up, just happy as shit. Just like, yeah, I'm here. And, you know, he's not really dressed the part. He has some Jordan 11s on. So I was like, all right, he might beat him. So, you know, but he does it. He just looks like, you know, He's, he's enjoying the moment. People are like, oh, can you believe this? It's such disrespect. One guy's just happy to be there. One guy was there to, to fucking win. Well, no. Well, no. One guy was there to actually do work. They're both there to do work, but one guy was definitely going to win. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and Tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.